You're absolutely sure about that, Professor Semenov? It's the only logical explanation. How else would Amelieva's gamma brainwaves be able to interact with Chernobylite if it wasn't at least partially sentient? And what about the gate? Some advanced form of telekinesis. That's not a sufficient explanation, not by a long shot. But if what you're saying is true, that would mean that the wormholes are... No, that is impossible. Why impossible? Think about it. Just because we've never seen an organism powerful enough to create, withstand, or even direct the exotic energy found near black holes, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So these fractal tunnels, they're also organic. So we're what? Traveling through the veins of a giant multidimensional Moby Dick? Right now, thanks to his trials, only the Black Stalker is. And if you like to play with metaphors, I would say more like a giant multidimensional squid. And that would make the shadows, what? Some kind of external white blood cells? I quite like that theory. They are here to nourish the main host and protect it from intruders and diseases. Us? Most of us, yes. Shadows emerge through the unstable gate, so you don't think it was retaliation or an invasion? No. I would rather call it the reaction of an organism that was attacked by something foreign. By foreign, you mean our test subjects. So shadows are some sort of antibodies. Exciting, isn't it? And Amelieva is like the correct protein, the conduit. She can communicate with the beast, but the beast can also speak through her. I've seen what happened to subjects who were exposed to Chernobylite. Getting some face time with this must be unsettling. What do you care? Our names will go down in the history books next to Newton and Einstein. Of course, Professor Semonov. This is all worth it. So Chernobylite is some kind of sentient multidimensional organism. And Tanya can communicate with it. This is... I can't even wrap my head around this. It's been so long, my love. Why can't I hear you anymore? Since you gave birth to the boy and fell into a coma. You used to visit me in my dreams. I miss our conversations. I... I miss you, Tanya. Sometimes, I think I lost my way in all this. Lost myself. 
We both made so many sacrifices, and now I'm not even sure what awaits us at the end of this road. But this is our only chance to be together. You cannot lose hope now. Please, just let Semenov have what he wants. Give it to him, and then we can have each other. Poor bastard. It seems his delusion keeps him going. But I need to focus. I have to find out what Tanya is supposed to give to Semenov. It's fascinating, Professor Semenov, really. But I'm here to discuss business, not scientific curiosities. Our investors need to see a return on their investment. You don't need to worry about that. It can be monetized in ways they can't even imagine. But that's just the thing. These people don't like surprises. They want to know precisely what to expect. New types of weapons, medicine, a new means of transportation? All of that, and more. You can tell your precious investors that the millions they're pouring into our project will come back to them as billions. And what about the Duga radar? It's been drawing all kinds of unnecessary attention over the years. These dark tourists and those damn stalkers. It has served its purpose. You can scrap it and make razors for all I care. We've got Amelieva now. She's the ultimate conduit. What we have in the works right now, it will transform the NAR into the biggest conglomerate in the world. It's going to be a trillion dollar business. We will use Amelieva to stabilize the gate to another world, the Chernobylites world. And once we are able to travel there, this will be a revolution unlike anything humanity has ever witnessed. You could call it an ontological shock. Ontolo what? Never mind. Okay, as long as you find a safe way of putting a dollar sign on it, you've got the permission of the board. But, you know, just keep your feet on the ground, okay, Professor? We're here to make money, not destroy the world or cause shocks of any kind. I've got it all under control. Everything is in place, and our patient Zero is ready. Dear God, so that's what Semenov needs Tanya for? Stabilizing a wormhole? A gate to the origin of Chernobylite. I need to get to the power plant and find her fast, before he can carry out this insane plan. Who knows what can happen to her, or to the world? I've got to make a plan, and move fast. Wake up, Igor. Tanya, what's going on? I want you to see something. Can't you just tell me? Kopachi, I'll be waiting for you, my love.
What the hell? That was a valuable prisoner. He was my ticket to capturing Berlin. fellow prospector. I have a favor I'd like to ask you. What's on your mind, stranger? I came across an old safe, but I can't open it. You seem to know a thing or two about locks, so I was wondering... Sorry, I need to focus on finding my brother. I found... I knew... I'm really... Any art. Did he suffer? I... Thank poor... Well, thank... His... Safe travels, my friend.
this used to be a typical village, a simple hamlet of a thousand souls. These people had lives, families. It was all taken from them, scattered, stolen or destroyed, buried underground. Now it's nothing but a sprawling sort of mass grave. It had to be done. The radionucleotides from the fallout contaminated this entire area. The liquidators risked their lives to deactivate this place. Deactivate? How very dry and technical. But it doesn't quite capture the terror that befell these people. We took the same classes in radiophysics in Leningrad. You know what I mean. Of course I do. But think about it. How quickly can you bury someone's life and past? Make it disappear? Change it, twist it, make it as if it never existed. Doesn't it frighten you? A lot of things frighten me right now, my love. Buried houses, ruined furniture, and missing feather beds aren't high on my list of scares, though. Do you think this is funny? You should be frightened, you know. Very frightened. Constructed in honor of the 50th anniversary of the Great October Revolution. There was a friend I met at a book club, Lena. She used to be a kindergarten teacher. She was always so devoted to the little ones. Their future was her job, her calling. Have you ever wondered how it was for the children of the zone? The evacuation, the radiation sickness. Iodine-131 is especially dangerous for kids. The little thyroids absorb it like a sponge. I'm not talking about that. They were supposed to be safe, protected. The party said the children came before everything else, before nuclear energy, before the arms race with the West and all the shiny medals and glorious parades on Red Square. Those children's world collapsed that night before they even had a chance to properly know it. I sometimes think those kids never left, that their souls still wander here trapped in those dolls, watching and waiting. Oh, what nonsense. Calm yourself, Igor. I'm not done yet. I, Igor Kunyunik, joining the ranks of the Vladimir Ilyich Lenin All-Union Pioneer Organization in the presence of my comrades, solemnly promise to love and cherish the motherland, to live according to the great Lenin's principles, as the Communist Party teaches us, as is required by the laws of the pioneers of the Soviet Union. Very funny. The young pioneer camp stirs up memories, yes? You must have been a role model for your companions back then. Do you still have your red neckerchief? I... I can't remember. I was never a fan of state-controlled organizations. Besides, I preferred to keep to myself, I think. A loner. Perhaps that's what you were meant to be all along. What do you mean? Maybe we were a mistake, Igor. I sometimes wonder how it would have been if we'd brought a child into this this fucked up world. Don't say it like that. It was our dream. Such dreams are dangerous. Volatile, like an unstable element. If something can go up in flames, it eventually will. All it takes is one spark.
Howdy, stranger. Got a sec? For you, always. I was just thinking about my mom again. The things she did, the things she saw. She was really something, wasn't she? Her career started long before Chernobyl. In the 60s, she was already working at the NKVD hospital in Moscow. She was treating other scientists for radiation exposure because, you know, some of them didn't care that much about their own safety. Oh, I know. There are legends about Kurchatov himself stomping in and out of the first Soviet reactor room without proper protection. They were all careless. My mom told me they behaved like irresponsible children. She especially remembered one very young lab worker who loved to scare his female colleagues. They would paint his lips, nose, and fingers with powdered radium and wait in a dark room to surprise them. My god! So his face would glow in the dark. Funny joke, right? And all it cost him was his life. I hope we're not repeating this kind of mistake with Chernobylite. Who knows? Perhaps we're slowly killing ourselves just by being close to it. Until we know more, everything we do is a risk. But we have no choice. I know, I know. I just want you to be careful, okay? Of course. Hi, Olga. I was wondering if you could share some of the know-how you've picked up in the zone. I'd be glad to. But here in the zone, you must be self-sufficient. You don't want to end up worm food. Fantastic. I'm ready to learn, oh great huntress. No jokes while we're training or I'll smack you upside the head. Got it? Okay, Igor, let me introduce you to your new best friend, the AK-47. Beloved weapon of revolutionaries and freedom fighters for decades. Some countries even put it on their flag, because it played such a big role in claiming their independence. But enough history. I'll give you some pointers to help you understand the weapon's full potential. The biggest challenge is compensating for recoil and automatic firing mode. You must learn to control it. Don't worry, the cans won't shoot back. Do your worst, or best. Ready? Commence firing. Work on your aim, and your stance, and proper grip, but you'll have many opportunities to practice. Okay, Professor, I think you've learned the basics. What can I do for you, Professor? Uh, hi, Olga. I, I was wondering if you could sh- I'd be glad- Fantastic. I'm ready to learn, oh great huntress. No jokes while we're training or I'll smack you upside the head. Got it? Welcome to your second lesson, Igor. Now I'm gonna teach you how to handle your rifle in automatic firing mode. I'll let you in on a little secret. The fastest way to kill an enemy is to replace all their internal organs with lead at a rate of 700 rounds per minute. Okay, maybe it's not really a secret, but it is common sense. You're a scientist. You should appreciate that. You've already met your arch enemies, the cans. Now imagine you have to shoot them all at once. This exercise is about using full auto mode and emptying an entire magazine in one burst. You know the Petrov stance, right? Control the recoil and try not to tear up the clouds. Remember, I will terminate the training if you stop firing prematurely. Ready? Okay, go! I think you're getting the hang of it. Now reload and finish them off, you ugly tin bastards! <laughs> Not all the cans are dead, but you definitely scare the shit out of them. I think you now have a real fighting chance against your enemies. Well done, Igor.
What's the matter, Mousy? How are things, Professor? What's going on, Igor? The fuck you want? Nice job. It's so great to work with someone who actually cares. I'm tired of whiny people's bullshit. Thank you. 